Hello friends, I am really pleased to walk you through the teachings of the Tibetan Book of the Dead today. There's actually a lot of teachings in Tibetan Buddhism on the process of death, the intermediate state and rebirth, but I'm just gonna call them the Tibetan Book of the Dead because that's what people are familiar with. So basically you can break down these teachings into four major parts that cover the entire human life cycle. So there's the stage of this lifetime, there's the stage of death, there's the stage of clear light, and there's the stage of what's called becoming. This is like the in-between stage before the next lifetime. And each of these stages in the Tibetan tradition is called a bardo state. And what bardo means is just in-between. And the idea of these is each of these stages of our life cycle is in between the one that came before and the one that's gonna come after. And just to pause for a second on how important this idea is of bardo states or in between states, every single day of our lives is in between the day before and the day after. Every single moment of our lives is between the moment before and the moment after. So at the end of the day, the teachings on the bardo state are really about how to be here, now. They're not, they do apply to the time of death, but they're not just about the time of death. And I think that's really important. So if you're getting into these teachings, you should just know that they apply to this lifetime as well. And in my next video, which when I make it, <laughs> I'll link it above, I will be talking about how to apply the wisdom of these teachings to this lifetime and the transitions that we all go through. But for now, let's talk about these four Bardo states. So the first of these states actually in a way is the most important and it's the one that people I think often overlook and that is the Bardo of this lifetime. The Bardo of this lifetime begins when we're conceived and it ends when we begin to die. So a lot of people say you die every day or like every day you have one day left to live. That's true, but there's also what in the medical world is called actively dying. And that's when your body is beginning to shut down. So the bardo of this life ends at the beginning of that actively dying process. And the thing that's super important about the bardo of this life is that this is the only one of these four states in which we have a body. And what that means is our body helps to kind of ground us and give our mind stability so that we get to choose what we want to do. I want to just say this again because it's so important. We get to choose what we want to do. After we've died and we're just like a mental body and we're having all these experiences but it's kind of like a dream, and I'll talk about that in a second, we can't really choose like, oh, now I wanna try and practice to recognize the nature of my mind or practice to be more mindful, practice to be kinder. It's too late. So the bardo of this life right now is the most important time for us to think about what's important to us put our time and our energy and our love and our care into that and really make it a habit. The bardo of this life is where we determine really what our future is gonna be, what our death looks like and what our rebirth looks like. And that's why in Buddhism, there's so much emphasis on meditation, on mindfulness, on noticing what you're doing, on being kind, because if we spend our time in this lifetime like that, we're setting ourselves up for the future to continue doing that. On the other hand, if we're not really paying attention, we just kind of do whatever we feel like, we're setting ourselves up for a future in which there's no telling if we're gonna be interested in like the stuff that really matters in life, like the nature of reality and kindness and connection. So this lifetime is a huge opportunity to spend our time in a way that is meaningful. Bardo number two, the bardo of death. I mentioned earlier that this bardo begins when we enter what's called the actively dying process. So if we die of an illness or of old age, our organs start to shut down, our body just starts to shut down, and there's a period that can last anywhere from hours up to a couple of days during which our body is shutting down, and that means that our ordinary mind that depends on our body and our brain is also beginning to shut down. People get a lot more interested in the bardo of death because it describes the experiences that we have during the process of death. 
Obviously, there's no way to prove that this is exactly what happens as people die. I'm not even sure how people like came up with these teachings on the Bardo states, but I suspect, you know, folks had near death experiences. So I suspect there's some kind of influence from that. It's also, I think, really based on the deep meditative experiences that people have. Um, and, you know, they really enter some altered states sometimes. So I think it's also based on that. But what I want to say here is, the point is not so much like these exact things are going to happen when we die, but that as we begin to die, our brain is shutting down, our ordinary mind is shutting down. If we're not at all prepared for that, it can be really scary. Some people freak out during the death process. Other people are very calm and go, you know, with a beautiful, quiet passing into the next life. So I think these teachings about the bardo of death are really helpful to the extent that they help us to wrap our heads around, okay, I'm going to go through this kind of experience. My body's going to be shutting down. My ordinary mind is going to be shutting down. It's probably going to be kind of scary, but I've educated myself. There's even meditations that you can do to kind of prepare for that time. And you, you just get ready to go. So during the bardo of death, one important thing that's happening is that your senses begin to shut down. So you'll lose your sense of sight, your sense of hearing, even your sense of your body and where it is in space. And it's actually said that every night this process happens, but more quickly as we fall asleep. So it's harder to notice. The thing that's really helpful about the, the bardo of death is that it happens more slowly. So we're better able to notice it and to kind of relax into it rather than getting freaked out. And the last thing to go is what Tibetans would call our sixth sense. So we have the five you know, bodily senses, but they also talk about conceptual mind as a sense. And conceptual mind is a part of our mind that allows us to like label things, you know, to recognize our family members or to even have the thought, I am dying. Any of those things are happening with conceptual mind. And I would imagine if your conceptual mind starts breaking down and you are not prepared for that, it'd be super frightening. And so again, the teachings are there to help us feel like we, we know a little bit what to expect and we can be more prepared to relax into that process and go with it. Because here's like the really important thing about the Bardo of Death. This is when our entire conventional sense of self breaks down, thins out, and during the next Bardo state that I'm going to talk about, the Bardo of Clear Light, our Buddha nature shines through clearly. Clearly. 100% all there. So the Bardo of Death is really the process of the ego that we've created, the sense of self that we've created being broken down, and something else beginning to shine through. That leads us to the next Bardo state, the Bardo of clear light. And the thing that's like so incredible about the descriptions of this Bardo state is that no matter who we are, like no matter how horrible a person has been, or, you know, if we're talking about the transition of a bug or something from this lifetime to the next, everybody goes through this experience of this moment where our true nature is just completely present. There's no limited sense of me or I, there's no like ego grasping, there's just what is. And for most of us, the teachings say we are not familiar with this state. And when it happens, we don't recognize that this is me. It just feels like this overwhelming thing is happening. We don't know it, we don't like it. And we just want our, our comfortable, familiar state of being back. And that's what happens. We kind of pass out from this state and we wake up into the next part of the state. But if we're familiar with the Bardo of Clear Light, if we have practiced during our lifetime to notice our Buddha nature, or if you're coming from a different tradition, to notice that part of yourself that is sacred, that is connected with the divine, if we've practiced that during our lifetime, then this moment during the cycle of death and rebirth is like the moment when all of our practice naturally comes to fruition. This just shows up. If we're able to rest in it, even for a short time, it is super beneficial because we're resting in our true nature. So if we're able to rest in that and recognize it as ourselves, then according to these teachings, we just wake up, that's it, boom, we're a Buddha, game over. 
Now you can arise in whatever shape you want to. You can take form in another lifetime in order to benefit beings. You can not. You can, you know, rest in a state of bliss and maybe emanate help to beings. I mean, depends on what your worldview is, what your belief system is, what happens at this point. But basically, you're awake. You have completed the spiritual path. Again, for most of us, this is just a tiny moment, but it is said, and actually there are documented cases of this happening, that people can rest in this state as they go through these bardos and just be present to their own true nature. And people can stay in this state for several days. Great masters might stay in it for longer than that, but there have been cases in Tibetan exile communities in India, for instance, where it's really hot and the body doesn't begin to decompose for several days after someone has died. Uh, there also are cases in which there's a little heat left around the heart center um, and other ways that people can recognize, okay, maybe this person hasn't completed their death process yet. We're gonna wait to cremate or bury or you know, do what they're gonna do with the body. So the Bardo of Clear Light is like the time in every life cycle when we're reintroduced to our true nature. Most of us are gonna miss it or just pass very briefly through it. So that brings us to the next Bardo state, the Bardo of Becoming. And what happens now is that basically you've left behind your previous lifetime. It's, it's done, it's complete and you haven't arrived at your next lifetime yet. So you're in this in-between state. And basically what's happening is that in the beginning of this bardo of becoming, you're kind of still identified with that previous lifetime. So you hear stories of, and I'll, I'll include a link to a book actually that includes stories like this. It's called Peaceful Death, Joyful Rebirth by Tulku Tundup. It's really good. But anyway, you hear stories of people who have died and they, find themselves in the room with their dead body looking down on it. It sounds a lot like near-death experience accounts. So people are looking at their loved ones in the room and maybe at first they don't even realize they're dead. They still feel like they are that person who's just died. And then gradually they begin to maybe realize that they've died um, and they spend some time in this in-between state in which they're able to just go wherever they want by thinking. So if somebody thinks of a person um, who's still alive, then immediately they might be like drawn into the presence of that person. It's also said that in this intermediate state, the bardo being, the being, you know, who's in between <laughs> can feel or maybe know the thoughts and the feelings of the people they were close to. So that's part of the reason that after someone passes away, people try to, you know, do positive things as much as possible, make merit or, you know, just send good vibes to that person so that it helps them to make a transition, you know, rather than being upset with a person who's just died. And if that Bardo being in their sensitive state, picks up on those upset vibes, it can have an impact on them according to these teachings. So the Bardo of Becoming is said to last up to 49 days. They say that every seven days, this Bardo being kind of experiences a death and a rebirth. And a lot of people don't even take 49 days. They might go through that first week and be drawn into their next lifetime and that bardo is over for them. So let's talk about the end of the bardo of becoming now. In the beginning, people were more attracted to the lifetime that had just ended. At the end of this state, people begin to be drawn toward their next lifetime. And according to Buddhist teachings, this happens on the basis of karma. So remember in the context of the bardo of this life, I said that what we, what we spend our time doing, what we spend our energy on is what we tend to keep doing. So in the next lifetime, whatever we were interested in, whatever felt comfortable to us in the previous life, that's what we're gonna be drawn toward. And there are descriptions, again, in these texts that are sort of collectively called the Tibetan Book of the Dead. There are descriptions of, you know, lights, like seeing beams of light or maybe seeing images of Buddhas. But if we're talking about the light, somebody might see a really bright, for instance, yellow light, and then also like a dim yellow light. And that really bright yellow light is Buddha nature. Again, it's, it's our own true reality sort of calling to us in that direction. 
But most of us find that light overwhelming, we're not familiar with it, and we end up drawn toward the dull light instead because it's more comfortable. And that's when we get drawn into our next lifetime. So that again is just kind of a reminder to get as familiar as possible in this lifetime with our true nature. To, to be able to shift our attention from the world of the conventional mind, the ego self, deeper into our being, more into our, our true self, which is always luminous and compassionate and clear and kind and whatnot. So at the end of the Bardo of Becoming, this Bardo being is drawn to their new lifetime and they're off to the races again. So the Bardo of the next lifetime has begun. So that's a quick tour of really the heart of the teachings that are in the Tibetan Book of the Dead. I hope that's been helpful to you. I want you to know also that I created a free PDF quick guide and there's a link to it in the info box below. So if you're interested, please go grab that and it contains links to audio teachings, also free, that you can stream or download that go into more detail on each of those bardo states. So I hope this quick tour of the Bardo states can help to do for you what really immersing myself in these teachings has done for me, which is I feel less afraid now of the end of this lifetime, of the death process and the afterlife, whatever comes next. I feel more like curiosity and wonder and I, I feel like it's an invitation to really get curious now about who we are now and not wait until some future time to try and realize like who we really are. I feel like most of us spend most of our lives trying to like arrive, you know, trying to finally get it all together. But because we're chasing ordinary conventional things and our true nature is Buddha nature or a sacred nature, an ultimate nature, that's never gonna be captured by conventional things anyway. That externally oriented approach just never works. But this gives us an opportunity to look inside. If you sign up for that Rebirth Quick Guide that I mentioned earlier, I will send you an email that has links to books you can read and just other resources to help you understand this really important topic. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you'll join me for the next video too that I'm gonna film in the not too distant future that is about how to apply these teachings to transitions that we go through in our daily life. So I hope you'll join me for that too. And I hope this has been helpful for maybe reducing any anxiety you might feel about the death process.